we are taking your help back with me, Wendy Lowe. We are coming to you from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. I'd like to introduce two fine young men who has served our great country, Theo Alexander and James Trice. Today, we shall be discussing a great organization referred to as CAMEL, Complementary and Alternative Medicines of Oahu, and addressing the underserved veteran population. Aloha and welcome, Theo and James. Aloha. How's everybody doing? Aloha, Wendy. How's it I'm going? so excited to get started with you guys. Um, we talk a lot and there's a lot to be said and shared and a lot to be done. And uh, I think you two guys are the right ones. So let's get started. So James, please share with us a little about your veteran service organization, your journey, and what the future has in store for CAMEL. Well, uh, thank you for having us. CAMEL has been around for a while now. We tend to help disabled veterans uh, reintegrate back into society, um, veterans who have recently gotten out of the military, as well as some who are currently still out on the economy. Um, we spend a lot of time doing things like horticultural therapy and agricultural therapy. We offer a couple of different services and referrals out to other veteran services organizations as well. And we're just really excited to be here today. Wow, thanks. Thank you, James. So Theo, if you could explain how, how CAMO is involved with research development of ca cannabinoid medicines and how you two are helping veterans overcome the chronic symptoms of PTSD. Sure thing, Wendy. Thank you for having us. This is such an important topic um, to discuss. Uh, many veterans are not aware of some of the services that they may or may not be um, available to them, uh, accessible. But the way we do this is that we partner with um, other veteran service organizations, mainly with CAMO, which is a 501c3, um, and vets also as well, Amherst Hawaii. And what we do is we developed a program with Dr. Sue Sisley, um, a world-renowned um, researcher for PTSD and cannabis medicines. And basically, uh, you see the screenshot of Dr. J Josh Green. We had a meeting with him in 2019. Uh, but we, we specialize in the research portion of that to see what is the assessment of how cannabis or cannabinoid medicines helps veterans relieve symptoms of PTSD. Wow. That's a lot of research going in and the, the attention focusing on that being a holistic uh, solution to some of the problems and issues that a lot of not just veterans but a lot of people on the street have. So the 329 Veteran Stand Down, which is VSD, is a premier event that welcomes veterans to the event and provides them direct access to cannabis clinicians and follow-up health care referral services. What can the veterans seeking cannabinoid therapy expect to learn from this event, James? <clears throat> The V29 Stand Down is an event we put on for veterans who may be living on fixed income, who may need help with accessing the State 329 program. We offer cannabis education, vaping education, so smoking cessation classes. We have, like uh, Theo just said, we have Dr. Sue Sisley, who's on board practically every year, and other clinicians who are very educated in medical cannabis, who are there on site to educate the patients as well. CAMO covers the cost of the doctor's visit so that the patient does not have to cover the doctor's fee. The patient only has to cover the, I think it's 3850 currently to the DOH for their card and that's it. So they come, they bring spouse dependents, get education, get their card and have a good time. Wow. So the whole idea about you guys being on this show or wherever you end up at any event is to get the word out that there are services for these veterans once they find out yeah. about it. And so basically it's all by word of mouth, unless we have shows like this, or I know that whenever there's a camera, you guys will gravitate to the camera so you can get the word out. So I have a slide here um, that you guys are being interviewed on KITV. So Theo, tell us, what did you guys talk about on that interview? So at this particular slide, um, you have James and I being interviewed by KITV, of course. Um, that was at our second annual um, 329 stand down at the Impact Hub in Cockwalker Park. So basically, we were being asked about why we do what we do and how is it we can do what we do. And 
we brought Dr. Sue Sisley to this event to speak live about her research, her FDA research on cannabis and how cannabis helps to alleviate symptoms of PTSD in the veteran population. Well, there is a lot of work to be done and is being done. And I know you guys will not stop. You guys are heroes on the field as well as on the scenes here on the streets here in Hawaii. And we're so, so grateful that you both are here working with our people here. And I know that this will probably be um, the beginning, a prototype that I know that you want to take to the mainland uh, and beyond. Is that correct, Theo? Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes, um, we, we, we try to do our best with what we have. Um, at this point in time, we've successfully volunteered for AMVETS. Um, I, I'm one being the post commander for the Westlock uh, post for AMVETS. And, and so, and James helps me out a lot with that as a member of AMVETS as well. Um, one of the things that we have done so far is we had an event last year to celebrate PTSD Awareness Day, which was June 27th. We brought a whole team of people um, from, from Washington, D.C. and around the nation to visit the VA, made history, matter of fact, um, being the first organization to discuss cannabis in an open forum with members of the military, also members of the veteran population. Uh, we brought Montel Williams here along with Dr. Sue Sisley, and he got a chance to, you know, have a little nostalgia and do a talk show for us right there in the, in the theater right there at the VA. Wow. So I know that the AMVATS Hawaii Hill Summit um, was here at the Tripler Army Medical Center and the VA Pacific Islands Health System location. How did you come to pick it at that location to hold this grand event? You know, it was a, it was a long route. Um, we had targeted the, the uh, cancer center because we had had many can cannabinoid events there and with the research they have there. Um, but lo and behold, we were off the opportunity to do it at the VA, which was a lot more meaningful uh, to be with the population of people who need this type of service and this type of information. And so again, we made history by doing that. Um, the VA directive kind of speaks to the situation of education. So we just met that. Um, we were able to get an MOA at this point uh, from AMVETS to the VA nationally to be able to discuss cannabinoid medicine. And right now, as we speak, um, AMVETS is putting a proclamation and a resolution to our national headquarters in Maryland to uh, have us to be the only VSO or the first VSO, should I say, to announce cannabis being a therapy or an interest for us to uh, go forth with our veteran population information and assessment and services. Boy, you guys are busy. <laughs> so you, like you mentioned, you brought in Mr. Montel Williams and the world-renowned FDA MD PhD Dr. Sue Sisley, tell me what was it like working with them and just hanging out with them? Wow, it it, it was amazing. Um, one with Montel, um, he left his talk show. If you if you should call his talk show was pretty pretty famous. Uh, it's one of the number one talk shows for some so many years. He left his talk show because he was diagnosed with a term with a uh, chronic disease that interfered with his ability to perform. And lo and behold, after a lot of medical diagnosis and a lot of, um, uh, how do you say, treatment, he found that cannabis was one of the best things for him. So he's become an advocate around the world to do that. He goes and talks to veterans and also the, the um, healthcare um, bodies. Uh, Washington, D.C. testifies in front of Congress of what cannabinoids have done for his health. And with Dr. Sue Sisley, she's one of a kind as well. Uh, she's the only FDA researcher that has completed a uh, PTSD clinical trial at that level. Uh, utilizing uh, cannabis with uh, with veterans. And so we to Hawaii has become one of her second homes, I would love to say. Uh, she loves frequent here. Every time we have an event, uh, Camo and AMVETS, she comes in person. Uh, she graces us with her parents. And the, and the information she comes with is, is so much information she comes with and, and capability that, you know, we couldn't do what we do without having someone like that on our team. Wow, Absolutely. what a powerful team you have. <laughs> I mean, I thought you two were powerful, but you got these other two. World-renowned mm -hmm. Dr. Sue Sisley and Mr. Montel Williams. Amazing. I mean, total success right there. I know it. I feel it. And I know you're making a lot of headway for the veterans and the ones that are suffering with PTSD as well as other ailments. So what were your takeaways following the summit and how have you progressed since then? Well, I, I should say that the summit, the AMVETS HEAL Summit, HEAL is an acronym for healthcare evaluation, advocacy, and legislation. So it's a combination of many different things that we put forward for information to get out and out on an outreach standpoint with uh, our veteran population. But you know, the takeaways, one of the most important things that we uh, were able to accomplish was building a relationship with Dr. Adam Robinson, uh, Dr. Adam Robinson Jr. 
he is the uh, the director of the VA uh, medical system, uh, the VAI on specific health care system. And so that was such a major um, impact for us to be able to connect with him. And because he is the answer and he is the access point when it comes to veterans and health care. And so one of the takeaways with the main takeaways was being able to build a relationship ongoing. And then we have that MOA, Memorandum of, Under of Agreement, with him to do PTSD assessment, survey, and some treatment when, when it comes to complementary alternative medicine therapies. Wow. So the whole idea behind all these talks, as I keep referring to, is getting the word out. <clears throat> and by having talks like this, I'm hoping the right person is hearing all this right information, jumping on board, either because they, one, need your services. Number two, they don't need it, but they want to help others who do. And I know That's you are amazing. always looking for funding. Or I know you're always looking for volunteers and just like-minded hearts that can come along your sides and work you know, tirelessly to get this situation under control. So I know the AMBATS Hawaii is always doing something great and always being recognized everywhere I hear it, AMBAT, CAMO, what's going on? In this next picture, in the next slide, what is this certification for? And I know you get many of them, but try to look at the people in this photo and tell me, Theo, what is this certification for? Well, in the center, we have our state commander, uh, Donovan Lazarus, he's a great guy. He's the, the guy that was mainly um, him and Dr. Henry Felix, Dr. John Henry Felix. They brought AMVETS to Hawaii maybe about three years ago. So we're the newest um, charter when it comes to AMVETS nationally. Uh, AMVETS has been around since 1944. Uh, we're the only congressionally chartered uh, VSO, Veteran Service Organization, that um, is in the United States, meaning that we have active duty military members within our membership. And so we also have veterans, of course. So in the picture, you see the city council uh, recognizing uh, AMVETS and, um, and Commander Lazarus for our hard work. You know, this effort is just a uh, sweat equity we put in to um, helping veterans get out of situations of, uh, you know, transition uh, from military into the veteran, uh, you know, to civil civilian world when it comes to jobs and uh, also with health care. You know, um, a lot of us, uh, when we exit the military, we're not aware that we may have some invisible wounds. And so uh, that's one of the things we uh, do as AMVETS is we have to do a proper assessment of the veteran as far as their needs. And so, you know, that's a hard task. Some people don't want to talk about that, but we are hard drivers. That's one of our uh, main missions is to help every veteran. And so that's one of the things that the city council saw fit to recognize some of the work that we're doing out in Ever Beach and uh, around the state. Wow. And you mentioned the name. Was it Mr. Henry, Dr. Henry Felix? Are you talking about the famous Hawaii-born Dr. John Henry Felix. <laughs> yes, that, that guy. Oh he's my a good God! Yes, he's a good friend. Yes, he's a good dear friend. friend. Wow! You know, so, uh, he's a member of Ambets as well. Wow! And so you said he was responsible for bringing Ambets to Hawaii. Yes, Dr. Henry, as you know, he's a major philanthropist, and he was able to yes. help us with some funding. Um, you know, he he also donated the property for the Veterans Memorial Parks uh, that we share here on this island. Um, he's done so many things, you know, it's, it's such a long list of accomplishments and, and travels that he's, you know, uh, helped us to share with. I, I live life vicariously through his efforts. You know, I, I, if there was somebody I want to be back in the health field, in the philanthropy field, he's number one on my list. Um, Amen. But yeah, Amen. Felix, yeah, he's, a, he's a really good guy. Matter of fact, uh, Ampress just recognized him last year with the Silver Hammond Award, which is a very, very prestigious, right. prestigious reward um, that we give to people of philanthropy and people who are helping veterans. Uh, I gotta make sure he sees this um, this, this thing yes. tech show because he is a hero, all of our heroes. I'm glad you were working closely with him and that he's given his time, his heart and his um, opportunities to you and the American vets here in Hawaii because when his name is on it, it's good as gold. So thank you, a shout out to John, Dr. John Henry Felix. We love you <laughs> and we mahalo you. <laughs> We all know that veteran homelessness is a serious issue. So how has US Vets, Cloud Break, and you'll explain that one to us as well, and the AMVETS Hawaii Westlock Post 5, how has you teamed up with the battle with this ongoing effort to reduce the numbers of vets living on the streets of Hawaii? Yes, no, no, no doubt, I mean, at any point in time, anybody can become homeless for for major reasons or minimum reasons. But one of the things we've done was we teamed up with another big organization, uh, VSO, called U.S. Vets, uh, led by uh, Mr. Daryl Vincent. Uh, 
Daryl Vince is a longtime friend. Uh, he and I and Donovan Lazarus, Commander Lazarus, we started out at the Oahu Veterans Center together pretty much um, before they did a renovation there in Salt Lake. Uh, long story short, uh, now that U.S. Vest has moved out to Eva Beach and they have the veteran homeless uh, shelters out there, um, mm -hmm. the complex, uh, Cloudbreak is also partnering with them to build uh, more veteran homes, to build more capacity. And so one of the things we did to link up, we're in discussion right now um, to have a horticulture therapy center out there or a, a hydroponic center out there. You know, if, for the of you who are not familiar with horticulture therapy, it's basically teaching gardening in a therapeutic, you know what I'm saying, um, in a therapeutic way, I guess you would say. Yes. And so they're really looking at that to do with their residents. Uh, many of the veterans out there do have PTSD, or have been diagnosed with PTSD. And horticulture therapy is one of the main things they are using now to get an improved outcome when it comes to patients suffering from PTSD. Wow. And make sure you include aeroponics, vertical growing systems. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> because <laughs> I'll be working with you guys. I know I see a yes. connection right there. And I'm excited because that has always been my heart to go out there and to teach these uh, young men and women um, to grow vertically and to grow. I mean, just to grow. That's the whole concept. Let's grow up together. And so I'm very excited um, that we're going to be partnering in some way or another. I just know it. So yeah, um, <laughs> can you just tell us a little bit, what is Cloudbreak all about? So Cloudbreak is a, uh, it's pretty much a, a housing um, opportunity for veterans. Um, they put an application in and they're assessed. Um, if they meet the criteria to be able to have a home out there, they're giving um, a, a space to live in, whether it's a shared room or a single room. Um, and that is so helpful when it comes to getting our veterans back into housing situations. Um, you know, and this just a situation with houselessness and homelessness is so close together. But a lot of these veterans are houseless because of maybe they lost a job or they're looking for a job. And so we're able to put them with cloud breaking U.S. vets so that they can be assessed and given the benefits they need. And that main benefit is shelter. And so that's kind of how cloud break works. They have many other programs. I, I'm probably not doing this, the justice that it needs to be, but it's such a good program. I would encourage the, the, um, the viewers to, to go and check out Barbara's Point and cloud break. You can Google that cloud break uh, U.S. vets and you'll see the information. But they do such a wonderful job with our veterans out there and, and keeping them sheltered and also with job uh, and workforce programs. Right. So Theo and James, keep giving out these shout outs to all these organizations because there are many people that are, will be watching this show and they don't know what resources are out there. And so by you all just mentioning it by word of mouth, as I keep saying, we can get more veterans into the services uh, and facilities that are made for them, but maybe they just don't know how to get there. So I also want to ask you both, um, how do you reach out and like say I was, I am a veteran on the street and how do you get your clientele? How do you reach these veterans um, if they're not finding a system or a organization to just walk in the doors and ask, how do you guys find them? I myself have been very, very fortunate to meet so many veterans throughout Chinatown, Ala Moana, Kaka'ako, the, and more of the southern side of the island through music because I was an artist before and then also through the hiking and the events that they have locally. A lot of times um, I walk around the neighborhood, Chinatown, obviously, uh, all of our things, and just talk with the people. Sometimes you cannot be scared to just talk to homeless people. Sometimes. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's like that. Some people are afraid of that, but I have to talk to them. Um, also, because I am a medical, I'm sorry, a medical assistant. So because I'm certified medical assistant, it's probably where I get that from as well. But uh, if not from there, well, like a 329, um, is, sorry, 329 <laughs> program is a DOH program. So, so you, you know, can reach a, and you can use other resources to help gather them. I mean, that's yeah. the main thing, right? Because they can't always that's find you. So like you said, yeah. James, you have to go out there and pound that pavement. Proactive, and, absolutely. Yeah, right. And even reach out to different like IHS or organizations that do take care of the people from the street and then go and talk story with them and find out what Very is important. your story. And that's what they want. They just want somebody to hear them, just want to listen. And that's yeah. what you guys are in the beginning. And then they're going to be um, pleasantly surprised with all the resources that you can offer them. 
That's amazing. So thank you. Keep reaching out. And everybody watching this, reach out as well, because somebody is out there waiting and needing us to just share our hearts with them. So um, Theo, in my next slide, I see you guys at the Philippine Consulate. Why are you meeting at the Philippine Consulate and attending the Philippine Economic Performance Business Forum? Yes, um, one of the aspects of AMBEST and CAMO is, like you said, the outreach. That is what makes it special. Um, going to these places and showing presence and uh, being engaged. The reason why we've been connected with the Philippine Consulate, over the last six months, we've been working with them, with uh, the Council General there, uh, Emilio uh, Fernandez. Uh, hello, sir. Um, we have been doing a great job as far as trying to partner because we have so many veterans who retire in the Philippines. And we also have a VA medical center that is the only VA medical center that is outside the United States borders. And so we partnered with the VA um, to be able to go and offer assessment uh, for PTSD so we can gather the accurate number of veterans that are living abroad there and are they receiving their benefits. So the council has the Philippine Council and the embassy and their employees and their staff has been great as welcoming us there. Um, in, in any event, they allow us to come up there and um, be involved so we can see how we can um, make things better for veterans in the Philippines. And one thing we've agreed on is to open a post in the Philippines, which uh, hasn't been done before. Um, so we're looking at doing that uh, maybe midsummer, uh, having that post chartered and uh, having it full and, and, you know, and starting what we do over there and reaching out. Wow, I can see a lot of connection here. I mean, I'm planning to go to the Philippines in midsummer, so we'll see what's going to happen. I just know the stars are lining up here. So, yes. <laughs> so James, I have a a a, a, a group shot of, of just a bunch of fine looking folks that are gathered at the Punchbowl Cemetery of the Pacific Front Steps. Please yeah, share with us great. what is the significance <laughs> of this event there. Man, this, well, the Valor of the Soldiers of the 29th Chemical Battalion is something that deserves a lot more recognition, not just in our local community, but military museums throughout the Pacific Rim as well, especially internationally. Our Pacific Islander soldiers fought bravely to protect our homes, and some of them died on that day. And, not, and it's very important that we salute that and that their, their service to our country and to our home does not go unrecognized by our brothers and sisters in uniform, as well as our spouse and the dependents also. Wow. Wow. I mean, I just, every time I see you all in the uniform, I mean, I'm just so proud that we have such mm -hmm. dynamic men and women that are serving. That's and then idea. yet, we right. need to continue to service them when they return and, and they are needing our services and our assistance. So I'm sure a lot of people of Hawaii have the same heart for the veterans, but we just need to in, um, just recruit them, engage them into how they can help. They just, a lot of us just don't know how. Well so we need you all to teach us and tell us, hey, you know what, just invite a vet to your home for Thanksgiving or do something. Just tell us what we need to do okay. and we can do it. But we truly, a lot of us don't know so we need education as well, the general public, and I'm sure they'll open up their hearts and their homes to these young men and women that have served and are serving. So I know in this next photo, we have Admiral Adam Robinson Jr., who is the director of the VA Islands Pacific Health System. He's just shaking your hands and he's probably giving you words of advice. I know he's not asking you where's the best restaurant, but can you tell us what you guys are talking about there? Yes, that, that, you know, at that event is the same event, the, the last slide you just uh, showed with the group members. That is the Westlock uh, Memorial uh, ceremony we have every year. So the Westlock disaster that, that James um, kindly uh, talked about uh, to commemorate the soldiers that passed away that day. And in that picture, Admiral Robinson is giving me his blessing um, to be able to commemorate uh, this event and the importance of it. He was our keynote speaker that day. He delivered an amazing message. You can find that on the VA yes. website on their on their Facebook. Um, if you want to listen in to it, it's maybe a little short of an hour, but he says Very so many great. good things in that message, and and it's something that every veteran needs to receive and hear. And you know, in, in that caption, like I said, we built a great relationship with with, with Dr. Robinson because he is an MD, you know, um, and he's such a prestigious person. And it's an honor for us to be able to be connected with him in his time of service here. And so uh, I'm promising him as well that we will be, you know, at his back and we will have his back for the remainder of the time that he's here to provide more services through that MOA that he's been able to, to give us. 
Wow. And so how long is Admiral Ad Adam Robinson Jr. here in Hawaii? Is he stationed here? Is he residing here? What's going on? Yes, he, he resides here. He's actually the director of the VA. Um, he, he, he's over all the VA hospitals and clinics from the West Coast, Hawaii, and in the, in the Pacific Rim. Uh, so he, he's a major, major player uh, wow. in, in, the, in the world of veteran care. And he understands health care, being the MD. He also served as a Surgeon General of the Navy for quite some time. So that uh, uh, jurisdiction includes the Philippines? Yeah, well, his, his jurisdiction uh, encompasses the Philippines, but we're trying to work it out to where um, maybe we can bring that a little closer to us here. Of course, mm -hmm. that's in another nation, you know, another country. So right. they have some things they do at the embassy a little different from what we do at the VA here. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the things we've been charged to do is, is make that relationship very seamless. And so we can do that through our veterans organization being uh, congressionally chartered. And this is why we've uh, given him this, his, our commitment to be able to do that. Wow, and I know it'll happen, and I can just see that we're all going to the Philippines to raise, yes, raise, raise awareness and raise funds, um, and that's the whole idea, bringing awareness to the Philippines as well, because like you said, Absolutely. so many of our veterans have resided to the Philippines. We know that for a fact, and uh, I know that personally as well, so I'm excited that we have made that connection here on the show, so if anything, I'm so grateful for all the work that you, you both as well as all the people that stand beside you, behind you, um, doing all the work that has to be done here in Hawaii and as well abroad. Just a real quick feel, um, just tell me how long were you serving and give me a little bit about yourself. I have a few minutes to go. Yeah, real quick, I, I joined the military at 17 years old, right out of high school in 1990. I exited in 94. I started aboard the, uh, aboard the USS American CV-66. I served in the Gulf War, uh, 18 months of it. So uh, after that, I got out and got my master's degree in health administration, and I came to Hawaii uh, after a short period of, of, uh, of health care executive management uh, there in Oklahoma. Well, wow, thank you for choosing Hawaii. And James, real quick, I have like 20 seconds. Let's go. Tell us a little bit about you. I joined the military at 17 as field artillery. I reclassed about a year and a half, two years later to, as a combat medic. I got stationed here in Hawaii. I taught first aid combat lifesaver at HAC Discom at Schofield Barracks. I deployed from there to Iraq, where I did some of the same in medevacs, and I got to teach first aid and combat uh, carries to the Iraqi police. I got our for that here. I PCS from here to Fort Bragg in 2008, where I worked in the ER as a trauma medic. I ETS from the military, uh, disability retired in 2010. I've been in Hawaii as a musician and a medical assistant ever since. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> um, our time has come to an end, but I'm so we're so grateful that Hawaii has adopted two more young brave men that are here to serve the people of Hawaii and the world. So our show has come to a close for now. First of all, a great big shout out to two fine American vets who continue to fight. Mahalo to Theo Alexander and James Trice for not giving up. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll return in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo, young men. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.